Hi there. Join us now at the Dover Transport Museum for their weekend of models and miniatures. The area which we are concentrating on most is the section of visiting uh, model clubs, mainly with model boats. There's people there with tanks and cars and other items, but mainly we're dealing with the model boats. So join us now for a glorious weekend at the Dover Transport Museum.
Recipe. Recipe. Better have one then, isn't it? Say no more, he said. We're all sitting over there. Come on, Miss Oh, well, I used to go to work with Sam with like that every day. Oh, Six signs at dinner. Every day used to go like that. And, and the time they used to get to 10 o'clock, I'd eaten nearly all of them. You know, to start, you know. If you were on site, you'd eat them and try them while I did. Well, yeah. submarine out running around already. It's a German Type 23 submarine, which is a coastal boat. Yeah, um, yeah the, the submarine is a coastal coastal boat. In actual fact, uh, they did only carry two torpedoes anyway, so this is pretty realistic. Um, and uh, used it around the coast. They weren't a long patrol job, so that, that's the reason they uh, they were known as coastal boats. Uh, Martin Martin Pryor is the guy who's converted this from a Bronco kit, um, and the torpedo system in it is uh, is electric, obviously, and it works by uh, uh, having a small living polymer battery in the torpedo and switching it on so it's actually running and then you insert it into the torpedo tube and as the torpedo passes a magnetic switch it turns the torpedo off so all you have to do is uh, release it or push it along by radio control just a little lever just to push it past the magnet and as it pushes past the magnet it starts the torpedoes and off they run they're free running obviously um, on the front of this submarine there are two torpedo doors which when they're shut it prevents the actual torpedo from firing so that's a safety feature which uh, has been built into the model. So we're just going to run it round the lake again just to let you have another look at it. Nicely weathered. 
135th scale. And in the middle of the lake, we've got a flower class corvette, one of the typical sort of um, adversaries of, of the U boats. Uh, that they spent months out at sea protecting convoys. Uh, they're relatively heavily armed with depth charges and uh, four inch gun and uh, anti submarine uh, radar uh, as they. And if you ever see the cruel sea, that's exactly the vessel that they used in that film. Right, so I think we're just about ready now. So, um, is everyone ready for this demonstration? Torpedo firing in about five minutes, maybe less. Five minutes? Five minutes. Well, he's got to load it. Yeah. Right, Martin's just um, setting the torpedoes up. As you see, the front of them come off. And they're so. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, right. Can we have that torpedo back, Mr. Premature firing. It's underneath there. It's coming back. Here it comes. There we go. Yeah, as you see, the actual torpedo is already running. As it didn't come past the magnet, it didn't uh, switch it off. Okay, so we are now both loaded, I believe. Yep, yeah. yeah, okay. So we have our poor Corvette. Bluebell sitting there in the middle of the uh, Atlantic now, and along comes this German submarine. Are there any Germans here? Um, and the lines itself up, ready to torpedo the poor old Corvette. So, is the Corvette going to sink? I hope not, because <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> right, here we go then. I'll be ready. Lining up. You want to go ahead a bit, Kev? <laughs> there we go. There goes fire one and fire two. And whoo! Yeah. 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 Missed it. Right. Well done. Okay. Well, that's the sort of thing that happens here. So we're going to get these torpedoes back and throw them back into the submarine. It's gone up the ramp. Can someone grab that wayward torpedo? Excellent. Have we got the other one? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we've got a limited running time, obviously, on these uh, LiPo batteries. And I think we managed about five or six uh, torpedo runs yesterday. So we'll get, the, uh, get them set up and loaded back into the torpedo tubes and we'll give her another go. We've got Calvin in charge of the uh, Corvette, so... He's taken over as the captain. He got away with it first time. So as a sitting duck, he's come back into the centre of the lake. Here we go again. And we're all loaded up, ready to go again. I'll be ready to go. Yeah. Martin, yes, he said. OK. We'll get the boat uh, broadside on. So it gives him a bit more of a target, seeing as he, uh, he missed the first time. Forward a bit, Kelvin, please. There we go. Line up central. Here we go. One torpedo away. Two torpedoes. Okay. I think that's uh, successfully done away with our Corvette. That's one torpedo out of the two. We'll give it another go. I think we've got a dead torpedo in the centre of the lake, have we? What happens with these torpedoes when when the uh, nose cone hits the uh, side of the wall? Sometimes it uh, it jams and, and stops the motor running. So uh, it's a bit of a safety feature, which is not really designed but works. So that's what's happened to the torpedo in the middle. Yes, just in the middle. By uh, Royal Navy personnel and a lot of uh, trawlermen who uh, were very familiar with the single cylinder uh, reciprocating engine uh, and could look after the engine with no problem. Uh, and of course, you know, staying out for all that time in really rough seas, uh, the trawlermen. So uh, here we go again then. 
We'll line up. Port torpedo tube only loaded. Into position. And fire. Ooh, ow. Ooh, it's got a lot of He said it too deep, didn't he? Run on, run deep. There we go. Let's do that and work out his death. Torpedo. Okay, well that's about all we can do for the moment. Can we recover the other torpedo? And then we'll give you another go at this bit later on, do you understand? Yeah? Uh, thanks for watching. Water on the water again, we've got some nips in. That large uh, trawler over to the far side, wrecked to the hull, built 1939, requisitioned by the Navy during the war. Failed as a uh, trawler then, but also carried extra crew who were uh, maintaining a uh, uh, submarine watch. Look at it, you both, while they were trawling. And then reported back to the warship to the side to the business. If you look at it on the uh, civil structure of the uh, trawler, you'll see that two, two lots around uh, to the various warships. Very useful little vessel and uh, could be operated in locks and in canals. So that's We've also got another little vessel running around with a blue hull, yellow funnel, showing stone dinghy. Yeah, I'll try it well. I've done only one for a while. I don't know. 15. Yeah, this is quite nice. The bow thrust is quite good. Yeah. Two big merchant ships in the right hand corner of the lake. They're owned by Neil, Neil Terry, one of our members. It's the big merch line. We've seen it arranged in many shows. Uh, there are other models of the similar design and they can only company. Always afraid to put them. This is up on the deck now. Water containers are individual. We will sort them all. Added them to the model as we've done along. You can also see on the fore deck uh, there's some machinery there, exported or imported, whatever you like. Some heavy stop up trucks on the in front of the bridge there. You might be able to spot those. And some diggers in between the uh, containers which are being exported. All the lights work on it. And the Merse gantry crane on the uh, on the centre that that can traverse along forward and aft to pick up the uh, containers and offload them if there's no short supply or no short trains available. <coughs> so that's the Merse Merse Katrine Merse. They're all named Merse. Always got blue blue holes. And as you can see, uh, Neil is demonstrating it very well by using the bay thruster. Just spins on its own length. Uh, 
Uh, the other one that Neil's running is the Blue Star Liner there. Yeah. The it's the Akrit Star in um, 1975 by Smithstock Company of Middlesbrough, built um, in the UK. She's a single screw vessel, uh, 155 metres long, so she's a fairly big vessel with a 30 metre breadth. Water gun, um, flies to go over both. Uh, run by British Rail, the British Rail cover for their amalgamate. <laughs> Distinctive funnel with a funnel cap there. It's a train side. So um, they were going to the very top of Dover and then they would uh, float her up to the, to the lines and then the uh, train ferry would roll on it. Overnight, I've been so 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 I've
originally bought a fair mile clear out of the museum. Yeah. And while I was flying back from Malta, well, mum and dad picked it up for me. Yeah. Looked at it. Oh.
John's on his way back. Oh. <laughs>